the whole process is quite straightforward, but let's just come to the tablet and take a look at the things that we need to do in the software. First, on Blender, we are going to use it to do the tracking, so the motion tracking, and create a 3D object, in this case, my hand, to use it on Embergen to create a fire. So here on Blender, the output will be a FPX with the animation that we are going to push on Embergen. And here is Embergen. Right, and then on Embergen, we are going to use this object to use as the source of our fire. In this case, we are going to use volume and particles. And then after that, we are going to export. In this case, I'm going to use PNG, but you can use EXR multi-layer like in my previous video. And it's up to you, uh, whatever is easier for you to use on composite. And then we are just going to bring it on After Effects, where we are going to mix and match the source footage and our export from Embergen. So basically, in this case, I'm just using Blender to create the geometry that we use on Ember Gem, and this will help us to create a more realistic fire, more realistic source. Um, I'm just going to use a, a cube in my example, but if you can model, actually model, let's say the hand or whatever you're trying to set on fire, it's going to really help you to have a more realistic result. So let's go to the computer. So to start, we are going to be using the Geo Tracker add-on. Right now it's on beta phase, so you can get it for free. I'm not sure for how long you can do that. So yeah, just go there, download the add-on and just use it. It does help a lot in this case. For example, my scene has only, let's say 61, I think, frames. So we could potentially also just do inside Blender regularly, even manually or using motion tracking. But I do think that with GeoTracker is a bit faster. So the first thing that I did is to actually, I went on After Effects and I cut my scene to the point that I need to start tracking the object in Blender all the way to the end, so I don't do the whole composite or the whole scene inside Blender. So let's open it here by first clicking here, create new geo tracker. Let's select our clip and we go here where I have my scene. So choose here, load clip. Then I'll also create a cube that I'm going to use as a hand replacement. Of course, here I could use a hand model, but for our purposes, we don't need to do it be so specific. So bring it here, more or less, to where I have the ha hand. I'll click Reanalyze and analyze the whole frames of my footage. I'm also going to come here on Render View, Exposure 5, so I can fully see what is going on because I'm using the linear footage. So yeah, now let's just wait a little bit until we get our footage analyzed, it's going to go back and forth, trying to see all the motion that is happening here. All right, so we now finished analyzing our footage. So I'm just going to come here. Actually, I'm gonna go after my left hand crosses with the right one, so here. Why is that? Because I'm pretty sure that this is going to pull off our track, make our track stop working. So I'm just going to start here and do everything automatically from here on. And then I'll just come back later and do the manual work from the frame 12. Of course, you can create a mask on the left one and yada yada. But in this case, I'm just going to go with the flow. So I'll select here my geometry. Let me just rename it as hand. Click here, select the hand one. Then start pin node. What I'm going to do is make the box uh, kind of matching to towards my hand. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to come here and then this one I'll put it. Double click. Put it here. Also going to create one here. And this should be enough actually. So I'm going to track forward. Come in here, track to end. There are not enough features, so apparently this one is too blurry for us to get enough information to track. So I'm just gonna move it here, here, and then here like this. Then I'm gonna add an extra one here. 
let's see if it works now but it does look a bit blurry yeah it's not working so let's do manually let's go here 14 this is just the gist of it you know and I think it's also good that you are seeing that it's just not working from the beginning because usually whenever I see a tutorial then I go and try to do it myself and I'm like it just doesn't work because the footage is usually optimized for tutorials which is not what we are doing here And finally, we got the automatic way. All right, so I would potentially have to come here and fix everything before, but I'll do that later. So basically now you just click exit pin load and then you have the geometry following the movement. Right, and then I'll just finish the manual work before but there you go so that's basically it now i select just the object and the camera then i come here export fbx and then i choose my preset here embergen 2.0 and basically scale 10 actually i'm gonna push scale 1 and minus z y up bake animation and then we export our FBX and open on Embergen. So that's basically it for Blender. And now let's go to Embergen. So now here on Embergen, basically we just need to import our mesh, which is already here on this import node where I'm just using the hand FBX. Then here when I click scale and center fit, it didn't work that well for me. So I just placed manually by selecting the node and doing like this. I actually removed the render all, but if you put it here, you can see, and then you can fit properly. Um, if you want more information about this, I did create another video that you can find here on the channel that it talks that I talk about Embergen itself. Then I just push the camera here to the render. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to have a PNG sequence. My footage I recorded in 60 FPS, so. I first did the simulation on Embergen at also 60 FPS, but when I matched both, it didn't look that great, to be fair. So I decided to push my simulation to 120 here on time control, 120. And then I just doubled the frame rate. And after in the composite, it looked way better. So basically here we see the animation. Of course, it's taking two times longer because of the 120 FPS. But in general, what the simulation consists of? It consists of, of a particle emitter, a volume. So on the volume is just the geometry. And the main things that we need to look here is just that I have some fuel rate, some smoke rate, then additional pressure rate, and also velocity transfer. I pushed all the way to 500. So whenever I have the simulation running, the fire goes towards the front from the movement of the punch. In this case, I also added this force line to help push even further. Um, right now it's a bit laggy, but let's just push to around 200 and then 200. It's going to clip a little bit my example, but then whenever you are just, you know, exporting, you just fix it. So you see here, just the volume, that's what I get. And if we just look at the particles, the particle is basically really, um, fast particles, meaning that they die uh, after less than a second. And then we have some smoke and then some fuel on top. So the smoke and then also some fuel and then some flames, velocity. Just played around a little bit with the options that we have. Then you see here how the particle looks. It's just to give a bit more detail to my simulation. I rarely, I rarely play around with the settings here because you can basically find most of the things also here on the emitter or by using this force line so i do prefer to just play around with this but i'm not that advanced in embergen so don't take my word for this um so the combination of both let's just quickly see them and you see here combined together so 
on the volume processing here, I just added a post modulation sharpen, 200 for the flames and minus 50 for the temperature. Just because when you have the temperature super high, kind of obscure the smoke and the rest. Yeah, so minus 50. And then I just exported, like I said, in PNG, and you have your final sequence. And that's basically it for Embergen. So now let's quickly go to After Effects. This is definitely not the best composite ever created, but you can get a gist of it. Basically, I have the footage that I told you uh, on Blender that I cut. So the beginning and the end of it. Then I have the full, the full thing here on the bottom. And then here also on top, what I did, I have one layer that is basically just me here. So let me actually solo this with mask prompt. It's supposed to just be me, you see here. I'm going to push it a little bit like this. And this is basically giving a bit more exposure to me to make me uh, a bit brighter because of the fire that is on top. And then we have here also on the right, I'm adding a bit of exposure here and then also here. Basically, this is just to give a bit of glow for the footage. So see here, there's opacity starting and ending. So when the fire is coming out, it's also making the whole thing a bit brighter. Then on top of that, we have our fire. We go over that. And then here just, you know, some heat waves to make it look hotter. And when we look at the fire, we have my PNG. I basically duplicated three times. So the first one is just a regular one with tint. So yeah. It doesn't get transparent and whatever is behind it uh, is not shown. Then the regular smoke on top. This also just a little bit of tint. This is just for saturation. So it's at 40. Then some curves. I thought it was a bit too hot. So I push it a bit down. Then some hue saturation also to make it a bit redder. Then on top of that, a uh, regular glow that gives a yeah, this nice glow around it. And then an extra glow on top that gives this final look. Then we come here on the comp itself. And then we have some grain, some exposure on top of it, and some hue saturation also, just for the fire. And then regular stuff on top, just the color, bringing everything from linear to my LUTs that I like to use, my S1 LUTs. And then we have here the final version of the footage. And that's basically it. So I hope you learned something from it. And if you do create something inspired by this tutorial, please uh, put it down below in the comments and I'll take a look and give my feedback. So I'll see you in the next one.